Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The National Treasury is starting to engage with municipalities on a scheme that could enable them to write off the ESCOM debt. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss this initiative. Hi Terence. Nice the outstanding debt owed to ESCOM by municipalities is a long-standing and growing problem. That's correct. You know, it's, at the end of March it stood at 57 billion rand and there was no sign of that sort of abating. I think Eskom's projections are that it's going to breach 60 billion rand and it's going to continue to rise unless something happens and uh, there's some sort of intervention to deal with this decisively. Now, we know it's been knocking around, as you say, for many, many years, and there's been consultations with Solga, with provincial governments uh, over these years, but it's just worsened and worsened, and it's really uh, an existential crisis now for Eskom. I think it's it's... You know, it already has this massive debt load that it owes to bond holders. And th this lack of payment from the municipalities is really a, now becoming a big hole that it can't fill. So uh, some sort of action has to take place and National Treasury has got this framework now in place. What is the National Treasury's approach to dealing with the problem? Well, it's been coupled to the 254 billion Eskom debt relief package that, that the utility itself uh, is going to receive, which was announced in the February budget, and that stole all the headlines, and it is a massive amount, and it's been going through the parliamentary process of approval over the last few uh, weeks, so it's had a lot of attention, but a subset of that uh, was dealing with this municipal arrear debt, so it's been coupled to that, and uh, Eskom faces a number, I think, something like 33 conditions that it has to meet to get its relief. And a number of those conditions relate to Eskom uh, facilitating the writing off um, of this debt that is owed by municipalities and, uh, and this growing uh, uh, stockpile of debt that's owed to Eskom by municipalities. And it's, uh, it's really, uh, this is the framework that's been provided and it, it's, it itself uh, uh, um, is associated with also a number of conditions. As you say, several conditions have been placed on those hoping to participate in the scheme? Yes, I think in total there's something like 14 conditions. And uh, you know, I think if you go through them as an ordinary citizen, a lot of this would be seen as just basic good financial management practice, good credit control. Uh, but this hasn't been the case at many of these municipalities that have built up these massive uh, backlogs with Eskom. So it's, it's basically a number of these municipalities are in a sort of a financial gridlock now and they sort of Eskom debt hangs over them and their balance sheets. Uh, so the sort of incentive here is to embrace these conditions um, which are difficult because it's not it's not the, even though it's normal or best practice it's not the practice of many of these municipalities and these conditions are quite um, strict and I think the municipalities will push back and see as some as some of them have been quite onerous for instance, if they apply, so apparently one municipality has applied, but if they apply for this relief and it's going to now be canvassed, uh, they need to then not take on any new borrowings for three years. So it's over, it's over a three-year horizon. Um, they also have to say that if they don't meet the conditions, if they start backsliding, they're going to have to voluntarily apply to the National Energy Regulator of South Africa to... Um, to actually revoke their own distribution license, which me almost means that that revenue source goes away. But the big thing, I think, uh, for these municipalities is the condition around that, around particularly e electricity, but also water and refuse, there has to be a culture of collection. And, they, and a number of these municipalities isn't a culture of collection. And the collection rates being put in uh, to the conditions is a minimum of 80% collection rate and rising to a sort of 95% level by the end of the three-year period. And all 14 of these conditions, and there's, there's a, a number, as I said, there's a number of others that have to show that their budgets are funded, they have to show that uh, they, they are going to be tough on, on the sort of residents that aren't paying and actually disconnect those residents. That's the whole collection thing. And if they can't meet that, they, they're not going to get the relief. But if they are able to do it consecutive for 12 months, one third of what they're owing to Eskom will be written off immediately 
at the end of that financial year. And obviously, it will be a third, third, third over the 36-month period. But these are, as I say, from the outside, this is what municipalities should be doing. This is just good normal practice. But this isn't what they've been doing. So it's going to be a major culture change. But unless there's a major culture change around payment and collection by, by municipalities, this debt spiral that they are in is, is just not uh, going to ease. Do you think this will work? <laughs> I think that's the big, well, it's the 60 billion rand question, because I think it's probably at that level already. Uh, you know, something has to give. Uh, there has to be some sort of resolution. And in many ways, this is a way out for these municipalities. So they, they've, got, they've got themselves in this massive hole. As Treasury says, it's a financial gridlock that they're in. Their, their collections, their revenue just can't cover their operations, and let alone to, to deal with this debt. But we're in a very difficult position because, you know, as well, this whole affordability of uh, Eskom tariffs is a big issue for municipalities. You know, we've seen the step change in, uh, in Eskom tariffs. And basically, the way people are responding to this is they are either not paying and hoping that the municipality systems are so bad that they'll carry on getting electricity, or there's a massive amount of, of electricity theft. And that's really in response to an affordability challenge. But as I said earlier, something has to give. You know, we, we can't continue with this debt spiral. And this is attractive for those who have a massive backlog. It, I think for those who have, have a small outstanding arrear debt, this, these conditions are, look very onerous. And I don't think it's attractive if you can get yourself out of it in another way. But if it's clear that you're not going to get yourself out of it, I think you have to, as a responsible you, you, you're sort of a limited time custodian of municipal assets and of, of that government to get uh, to not make this an intergenerational problem, which it already has become. But, you know, uh, we have to, there has to be a line in the sand drawn. And basically, it's a way out. You know, don't ever have to pay that. What the key condition, you know, I didn't mention earlier, a key condition, they have to keep their current account with Eskom paid. So they'll get their invoice at the end of the month within 30 days, they have to pay it. And if, if they're not keeping that current account, you know, uh, in balance, um, then they also, they will be in breach of conditions and they won't be able to get the relief. So it will, it will allow us to start from day one. Again, Eskom will be sort of getting their payments. The municipality, the big reward at the end of the day is they won't have this albatross around their neck, which is not just, and I know for politicians, uh, they have very short cycles, and that's part of the problem. But from a administration perspective and a longevity of these councils, they really have to get this off their books so that they can really start doing proper service delivery with our and raising debt, good debt, to do good things. You know, and at the moment they just there's, there's just no way they can get out of it without this relief. So look, it's it's an innovation. Uh, it's not a dripping roast for anyone. It's going to be painful, including for residents. But we have to try and get this culture of payment going around things like electricity, around water, around refuse collection. And if we don't, this, it's, the municipalities are just going to become more, less and less sustainable. And we, we can physically see it as South African citizens. We can physically see these, uh, these financial crises just on our roads, in our water management, in the lack of water, in the ongoing power cuts. So something has to happen. This is an opportunity, but I think it's a hard sell. It's not, an, not the easiest one. And I think because residents have been getting away with not paying for so long, it's going to be a diff real culture shock if municipalities uh, come down hard. And, you know, sometimes these things do become violent. And it's, it's, so it's hard to be a counsellor in these things. You have to have sympathy for counsellors in, uh, in these situations. And then there's also been this, uh, the court's pushback where Eskom say, look, we're going to disconnect this council. And they, they take it to court and the council tends to win. And so the, the, the sort of punitive levers haven't really been pulled. And unfortunately, we're at a point now where I think some of those punitive levers have to be pulled for the next generation. Otherwise, we're going to have totally unsustainable councils and really uh, 
there's living proof all around what that means. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.